Hey y'all, my name is Trish and I'm a professional video editor and a passionate photographer. I'm here to help you guys learn about the art of photography. And this list of 10 accessories is gonna help you enjoy your camera even more. All right, first up is a camera strap. Now I was very anti-camera strap for a really long time. I always felt like it was unnecessary and got in the way. But when I really started to embrace using the camera strap, it's allowed me to take my camera a lot more places. And when I'm shooting with lenses like the 200 to 600, really long, heavy lens, it allows me to rest my arms in between shots, which can be super helpful. Camera straps come in all sizes, colors, styles, and a lot of times one will even come with your camera. But when you're choosing one, think about the comfort level and how strong it is. You want something that's easy to take on and off your camera so that you use it all the time and that if you have multiple camera bodies or multiple lenses, you can switch the strap across them really easily. So I love using this Peak Design strap nowadays. It's the best made, strongest strap I've ever used and it's really, really easy to use this clip system to take the strap on and off my camera. So what I've done is I've purchased multiple clips to keep on my different long lenses and camera bodies and then just this one strap that I can switch between them really really easily. Next up is a lens cleaning kit. So you don't have to get really fancy with this um, but essentially what you need is a way to blow the larger dust off of your lens, a way to wipe off the kind of medium size dirt and then use like a moist cloth to get that fine dust off. And so you can go online and buy plenty of kits that have all of these items put together, or you can do what I've done and just accumulate them over time and build out your own kit. So this air blower is a lifesaver. It's much larger than I would like for it to be. It's kind of a pain to bring sometimes, honestly, but um, there's nothing better than this that I've found out there. And so you'll use this blower to blow the top of the lens, actually squeeze it and get the dirt off of the top of the lens. And so this is really a lifesaver, especially when you're outside and you don't really have the ability to do a full cleaning of your lens, but you do have dirt on there. Next is this kind of microfiber cloth. If you're a glasses wearer like me, you already have a bunch of these at home. You can find these at most stores really, really cheap. And so the main thing about this is make sure they're kept clean. You don't wanna use one that's dirty because that will push the dirt around on the lens and sometimes will end up scratching, have these tiny little scratches on your lens. So once you've done those two steps, the final step, which isn't always necessary, but kind of when you're doing a deep clean, is to use these lens wipes. So these are moist lens wipes and I love this brand by Zeiss. I actually bought a box of about like 500 of these back in college and college was a long time ago and I'm still working through that box. So if you invest in some of these up front um, and you take really good care of your lenses, you're gonna be able to last for a long time. So make sure that you are cleaning your lenses. Lenses are a big financial investment. You wanna take care of them. I've gotten into a habit where I clean my lens after each shoot, especially because most of the shooting I do is outside. So I get a lot of dirt and dust on my lenses but I would just get into a good workflow to where you check your gear after each shoot, make sure that everything's charged and cleaned and ready for the next shoot. So speaking of lenses, buying a new lens is one of the best ways to explore a new style of photography. Whether it's a new macro lens or a zoom lens, it can really open your world to different types of photos. But with each new lens comes the need for a new UV filter. And so a UV filter, is a filter, glass filter, that's gonna go on the front of each of your lenses. The really important thing about having a UV filter, in my experience, is that these are a fraction of the cost of your lens. And so when the inevitable moment comes that you bump your lens, hit it on a rock, run into your friend, maybe drop your camera accidentally, this is what's gonna take the impact in a lot of cases, rather than your expensive glass of your lens. So I would really recommend every lens you have to get a new UV filter. The important thing though, because this is going on front of your expensive lens, is to make sure that the glass quality matches the quality that you purchased on your lens. So just don't cheap out on these. Stick with reputable brands. Um, this is a brand called Earth, but there's a lot of really great brands out there. Just make sure the glass quality is high so you don't compromise the sharpness of your lens. And when you're purchasing your filters, there's gonna be a number on the front of your lens for example, 62 is the size for this filter. 
So check on the front of your lens. There's going to be a number there, um, 80 something, 60 something. It could be a whole range depending on the size of your lens. And so that's what you want to match to the size when you buy your filter. Next up is an SD card. And so your camera is going to either use SD or CF cards, but I'm going to talk about SD because it's a little bit more common. Now, when you look for these online, there's going to be a million different kinds out there. So I recommend you stick with some reputable brands, brands like SanDisk, PNY, Lexar. Um, these are brands that are going to have really high quality SD cards for you to choose from. When you're buying these, remember a couple of things. Stick with a class 10 or higher. So there's going to be a little number on there that says 10. Make sure you buy cards with enough storage. So I don't go any less than 128 gigs per SD card now. That allows me to not have to worry about if I fill up a card while I'm shooting. I can get a lot of storage of photos on these cards. And you do always want to try and have a backup. So I'd recommend getting two cards for to start out with. These are essentially little plastic pieces. A lot of things can and do go wrong with them, especially when they're outside of the camera. So having a backup can really make sure that you don't ruin a good opportunity to get the photo that you're looking for. When you're done shooting, you're gonna to wanna to offload the SD card onto your computer so that you can look at your photos. So your computer may have a built-in SD card slot, and if it does, you can skip this one. But if it doesn't, like my MacBook, I can use an SD card reader. There's a ton of different versions of these. I'll show you a few here, but the thing I love about this one in particular is just how slim and compact it is, and it's very fast. It also has a micro SD and a regular SD slot and a USB-C connector. So this is just super easy. I love this one and I'm a big supporter of it. One of the biggest reasons I love it, like I said, is because of its size. And for me, that means that it fits into my accessories pouch, which is gonna be the next item on the list. So an accessories pouch can take a lot of different forms. I've even used Ziploc baggies, different makeup bags, whatever you need. But the idea is for all of those smaller, more delicate pieces of gear to keep them in one essential reachable pouch so you have everything you need to go. I love this pouch in particular because it's so compact, so easy. It has great compartments inside and it comes in a bunch of really cute colors. So I can see myself using this one for a really long time and I've been using it now for about a year. So as long as I have this pouch and my laptop, I can offload photos and edit photos anywhere that I go. And so in here, I keep that SD card reader, those backup SD cards, and I keep a solid state drive, which is gonna be next on our list. And so a solid state drive is a hard drive. There's no spinning disc inside, so these are a lot more reliable, quieter, faster. And you can see how slim they are. And this has a full terabyte of storage capacity. And so this I take everywhere I go so that I can offload photos and don't have to worry about filling up too many SD cards. Even if you have enough storage capacity on your computer, I really recommend that you get an external hard drive and back all your photos up on here. Now, some things to keep in mind when buying an external drive is making sure that that drive works with your type of computer. So you wanna check in the specs if it says it's compatible with a Mac or a PC. Um, this one, for example, the Samsung Portable SSD T7 is compatible with both Mac and PC. And so because of that, and because of the reliability and the high storage capacity options, I use these for not only my photography, but my professional career as a video editor. And so I really recommend these. You can see how slim and easy they are to take with you. And in addition to the drive, of course, you need the, the cable. And so the cable and the drive I keep inside my accessories pouch. Similarly to the SD cards, when you're buying an external drive, make sure to consider the storage capacity. For an external drive, I get nothing less than 500 gigs. They're so affordable nowadays, and you really don't wanna get a drive and then fill it up really quickly. So you wanna get one with enough space that you're gonna have room to grow in that drive. I like to buy a drive that's gonna work for a year of my photos or for a full photo project. So I have drives that range from 500 gigs to two terabytes. So with that hard drive, you're gonna to wanna to start organizing and editing your photos. And the best editing software out there, in my opinion, for photography is Lightroom. I'm gonna have a future video talking about the basics of Lightroom, how to organize, how to edit, how to really get the most out of the program for beginners. So be sure to check that out. But in the meantime, there's a ton of resources out there for you to learn how to use Lightroom and get started. 
Now Lightroom is a subscription based program. So right now the cost is $9.99 a month for Lightroom only. If you upgrade to the photography bundle, you can get both Photoshop and Lightroom for $19.99. So give Lightroom a go if you haven't, and you'll start to learn that editing your photos is another way to enjoy them. So the next item on the list is probably no surprise. It's a tripod. And these can be extremely helpful for photography, depending on what kind of photos you're taking. For example, if you're shooting a lot of fast moving animals or birds, like I often am, then having a tripod can actually hinder you sometimes because you don't have the flexibility of using the camera free handed. And so instead of a tripod in those situations, what I do is I'll take my lens and I'll prop it up against something like a tree to be able to help me get some stabilization on the lens. But in other situations, like wanting to take a really cool photo of yourself or take a photo of the moon or the stars, having a tripod is a really essential tool. Something to consider when you pick out a tripod for photography is you want it to be lightweight, easy to take around with you, but sturdy enough for the type of lens and camera that you're gonna be shooting with. So what do I mean by that? If you're always gonna be shooting with a small lens, like a 50 millimeter, then your tripod could be a little bit flimsier and it doesn't have to support as much weight. But if you start shooting with something like the 200 to 600, a long zoom lens or a heavier lens, then you really need a tripod that's gonna be able to take that weight. So just keep the weight of your gear in mind when you're picking out a tripod. Now, for those of you who haven't ever used a tripod before, I am going to have a video coming up where I go over just some tips and tricks of how to really optimize and use a tripod in a way that's most helpful and avoid any big mistakes like I've done um, that cause your camera to fall over or even your tripod to break. So we'll go over that in a future video, but for now, some quick reminders are to just Make sure that you always put the top plate securely onto your camera. Double check it, make sure it's tight and secure, and then mount the camera with that plate to the top of your tripod. And finally, make sure that your tripod is secure and balanced before you ever walk away from it. Okay, so the final item on the list is one of my favorite, and that is a camera bag. So a camera bag can take many shapes. It can be a purse, a backpack, a tote. It really doesn't matter. As long as you have a camera bag that allows you to take your gear out and shoot more often. Over time, I'd recommend that you find a camera bag that's intended for cameras, has all the right pockets and protection for you to be able to take care of your gear. But in the meantime, just make sure you have something that encourages you to pack up your gear and get out and take more photos. In a future video, I'll walk through why this is my absolute favorite camera bag now, and I've had many over the years. But for now, just make sure that you get a camera bag that allows you to take your camera out and enjoy shooting. And to help you start looking for one, I'll link some of my favorite camera bag brands down below. That'll include purses, backpacks, satchels, all kinds of things. So you can have fun looking through those and find one that works best for you. All right, that's all the information for today. I hope that was helpful. And let me know in the comments what you guys are shooting. I would love to see some of your photos. Let me know what videos in the future would be helpful to make. And I'll see you next time.